This program is offered by Dear True Hunters friends, welcome back to our special video test dedicated to a very special purpose gun. The brand new Sabati Mercury Scout with a, a tumble stock chambered for the two super classic Scout calibers, the 223 Remington and the 306 Springfield. The Sabati Mercury Scout model has uh, some peculiar features that intends to redefine the concept of a standard scout gun. As a matter of fact, the scout rifle is a class of general purpose rifles uh, defined and promoted by Jeff Cooper in the early 80s. These bolt action carbines are typically 308 caliber, less than 1 meter in length, which is about 39 inches and less than 3 kilograms, so says 6.6 pounds in weight with iron and optical sights and fitted with the practical slings, such as the chin slings, for shooting and carrying, and capable of hitting one sized target out to 450 meters or 500 yards without scopes. Typically, they employ forward-mounted low-power long-eye relief scopes or sights to afford easy access to the top of the rifle action for rapid reloading. Cooper defined several distinguished characteristics of a scout rifle. An unloaded weight with accessory of 3 kilos, 6.6 .6 pounds, with 3.5 kilograms, 7.7 .7 pounds, the maximum acceptable. An overall length of 1 meter, 39 inches or less. These two characteristics place a scout rifles into the general class of carbon. A forward-mounted telescopic sight of low magnification, typically fixed 2 to 3 power, but more recently variable 1 to 5 or 2 to 8 power. This preserves the shooter's uh, peripheral uh, vision, keeps uh, the election port open to allow the use of stripper clips uh, to reload the rifle and eliminates any chance of the scope uh, striking once uh, broad during recoil. Ghost ring or similar auxiliary iron sight, a rear sight consisting of a receiver mounted a large aperture thin ring and typically a square post front sight. This allows the rifle to be accurately aimed at the short to medium range even if the scope becomes damaged. As regards accuracy of the scout rifle is dictated by short thin barrels, synthetic stocks and bolt actions. Other optional features include a retractable bipod, detachable magazine, a boot magazine and an accessory rail for light and other attachments. The addition of some of these features often render the rifle technically not a scout as originally defined, but this has come to be accepted by many as still conforming uh, to the spirit, if uh, not the letter of the concept. Being slightly shorter than most full caliber rifles increases the muzzle blast from a scout rifle and being lightweight increases the felt recoil. Even the re recoil of the 308 Winchester in a scout was described as feeling like a 300 Winchester Magnum. But this is not the case of our Sabati Mercury Scout since it has been constructed a little bit heavier than standard scout rifles and bears a proper made muzzle break. In fact, the rifle weighed about 7, 3, 4 uh, pounds without scope, a perfect compromise for a scout uh, uh, wide and or mountain gun. 
The Sabati Mercury Scout is based on the model Rover Tracker medium bolt action. This is a cock uh, on operating push feed design based on the Remington 700 pattern. The Sabati Mercury Scout's action has been modified to accept a five round detachable box magazine and fitted with other very interesting enhancements. This includes a removable flash recoil muzzle brake suppressor, a 15 slots weaver Picatinny rail forward of the receiver for convenient higher air scope mounting, with a glued rear aperture sight, a front sight on ramp, a special tumble stock with generous recoil pad, and a custom twist rate of 1 to 8 inches for the 3006 and 1 to 9 for the 223 Remington for its 11 and half inches barrel in order to allow the owner to use also subsonic cartridges and long and heavier bullets for the calibers. In fact, the 1 to 8 inches twist rate for the 30 caliber is able to stabilize both the standard 130 to 150 grains bullets and also the bigger 200 up to 240 grains bullets. The main purpose of this unconventional rifle twist rate is to allow the hunter to use subsonic and or low noise cartridges while hunting for example wild boars in those sensible places where those pests are used to live around the highly built area. In the case of the 223 Remington chambering, the purpose is to give a higher level of accuracy with longer and heavier bullets for the caliber, such as the excellent 60 grain nozzle partition, the 62 grains fusion and trophy bonded tip, and above all, the 64 grains Federal Power Shock and Winchester Power Points. The Sabati Mercury Scout receiver has the usual integral screw thread holes for standard scope basis mounting similar to those of the Remington 700. The synthetic thumble stock is uh, uh, green with uh, green uh, and black recoil pad and it complements the uh, carbine's matte black metal finish. This special thumble stock has been specifically designed by Sabati Mercury for allowing both long and very short distance shooting due to a particular ergonomy of the pistol grip. The trigger of our test rifle released cleanly with zero take up at three pounds according to my RGBS trigger pull scale. But it can be adjusted from three quarter to three and a half pound through an internal screw. In option, Sabati offers the French stacker system that uh, I have personally adopted for my field test. The safety is the standard two position type. Forward is fire, rearward uh, is safe uh, and uh, locks the bolt closed. The bolt release is located at the left rear of the receiver. The magazine release is a lever protruding rearward from the front of the cast aluminum trigger guard. Uh, you could call the Sabati Mercury Scout a real pretty rifle, but it is also business-like. The muzzle brake can be unscrewed and the threading can be fitted with the included ferrule. Obviously, in all those countries where it is allowed, on this uh, thread can be mounted a si silencer or a, or a suppressor. The muzzle brake device is just two inches long for an additional two inches of barrel length which is 18 and a half inches long. The two inches added by Sabati Mercury to the length of 16 and a half of the standard scout barrels do not increase by much the overall length of the rifle and increases muzzle velocity while reducing muzzle blast to the shooter. A flash suppressor is pointless for a single hunter guide or explorer in a remote country, uh, the application for which the scout rifle was created. But here the manufacturer has perfectly accomplished both needs. 
My standard rifles uh, testing distance were 100 and 200 meters with two conventional ammo, both uh, shot with a variable scope. I fired three shot groups for record with two types of commercial ammunition. This included the Winchester Super X with a 64 grain power point bullet that I used for short and medium distance hunting with my 223 Scout and the Cellier and Below with a 180 grain nozzle partition bullet for medium and long distance shooting with the 3006. The average 100 meters group size with the power points ammo was 1.2 inches, while at 200 meters the average group was around 2.4 inches. The average 100 meters group size with the SLA and below ammo was 1.3 inches at 100 meters and 2.2 at 200 meters. As you can see from the targets, the scout delivered the consistent and quite teeny groups. I thought it's a short barrel. But the most interesting features of the Sabati Mercury Scout barrels was its ability to correctly stabilize both 64 grains unconventional and 180 grains conventional bullets with very good accuracy. The main target of my twilight hunting were wild boar, red and fallow deer. Since uh, twilight hunting for wild boars and deer is highly demanding in rifles, ammunition and scopes, I have uh, topped uh, uh, both scouts with the Cytron S3 LR 3.5 10 per 44 mm scope with MOA 3 ballistic reticle, which substantially improved the practical accuracy and the use in low light conditions of these uh, two uh, little carbines. I also discovered that the Sabati Mercury Sky Scouts stock, designed primarily for use with the conventional telescopic sight, had the comb just perfect also to comfortably use both higher air scopes and iron sights. The Cytron S3 LR 35 10 per 44 mm scope has an illuminated central red dot MOA 3 ballistic reticle designed for low light shooting application with 11 position rheostat to allow the shooter to easily acquire the target, an essential feature especially for wild boar culling. A 30 mm tube, a very compact design with only 13 inches in length and just 21 inches in weight. A side focus with parallax adjustment aimed for quick and uh, easy adjustment that will focus from minimum focusing distance to infinity. Exact track adjustment system for extreme precision and accuracy, fully multi-coated, shockproof, waterproof, nitrogen gas char charged and a lifetime warranty. For my hunting field test I decided to limit my shooting range at 500 meters so the 10 times power was good enough for the job. The MOA ballistic reticle is just perfect for hunting with both measurement in yards and in meters and it's always very accurate and very easy to use even for novice. Every horizontal line on the vertical bar is two MOA with a, a total regulation of 15 lines that correspond to a 30 MOA total exertion. I have also used a digital scope, the Yukon XT 6.5 times 50 mm, a very useful device when hunting in critical light condition for wild boar and fallow deer. Now let's see together the numeric performance of this commercial ammunition uh, used in the test starting with the 180 grain cellier below. Velocity at the muzzle 2575 fps for an energy of 3600 joule. At 100 meter, energy drops to 3,000 joule. At 200, drops to 2,325. The Winchester Super X with 64 grains power point bullets produced at, at the muzzle 3,020 fps with an energy of 1,800 joule. At 100 meter, the energy drop at 1,360 joule. Well, dear True Hunters friends, after the necessary introduction, 
to the leads of our test. Now let's go to the shooting range first and then soon after on the hunting fields. Finally, I am at the shooting range for making our groups uh, of our two scouts in 223 and 306. And then uh, we will uh, zero uh, both uh, rifles at 200 meters. When we use uh, the 223 at the shooting range, uh, almost always is, uh, the results are, uh, are really satisfying. And this is the case with this kind of ammunition, but above all with, uh, with the barrel of the Scout Sabati Mercury. Now I will show you a group of five shots at 200 meters, 200 meters. And this is uh, something really interesting. Let's see together. This is uh, the first shot, the very sh f uh, first shot. Then we have uh, other four shots here. Uh, they, the, they made a, a unique big hole, uh, a little bit higher uh, on respect of the first shot, probably because uh, the, the heating of the barrel. But with the 64 grains uh, uh, ammunition, with the 64 grains bullet, with Winchester ammunition, uh, this kind of result uh, encourages a lot uh, uh, the hunter because uh, you, you can do uh, so, uh, so also at long distance some shots uh, that uh, usually are made in, uh, at, at a maximum 100 yards or 100 meters. I'm referring to the neck shot. Uh, which is uh, something that uh, with, a, with a small caliber like the 223 uh, is, has been done in the past and, uh, and always will be uh, on big animals. Uh, I used to make a neck shot on, uh, on a red deer and fallow deer, sometimes also on wild boar at long distance with, this, with the small calibers. So with, uh, with a group like this, uh, I'm, I'm very uh, satisfied and I'm, uh, I'm really relaxed when, uh, when I, I do my shooting because I know that the bullet will strike exactly where I'm aiming. And this is very, very, very important. Okay, now uh, let's go and see the, um, the performance of the Scout in 306. As it has been with the 223 Scout by Sabati Mercury. Now I want to show you the group, uh, uh, the best group I've made with three uh, shots with the 306. Okay, this is a, a very interesting group. At 200 meters, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I must say, unusual for a 306. But if I, if I put my mind on this uh, matter, I, I must say that uh, it's not the first time that uh, I, I test a 306 with a, with a twist barrel uh, a little bit faster and uh, I obtain such as a good results. Um, this is uh, something that, uh, that uh, makes me not only happy and satisfied, but uh, in the, in the, in, with the right spirit to go hunting because uh, uh, the kind of hunting uh, I will do with the, this kind of rifle uh, will be very demanding, on the, especially on the accuracy side. So a, a group like this makes me uh, very tranquil and, uh, and, uh, and um, with a, a lot of will for the result. Okay, now let's go hunting. Let's uh, start our uh, test of the Rover Mercury uh, Scout in 223 and 306. I have found a very interesting place, uh, especially, especially for fallow deer hunting. 
um, it's uh, it's a uh, it's uh, a, a special place where it's difficult to hunt because uh, normally here in in this uh, season we are at the end of uh, January, beginning of February. Uh, the uh, this the fallow deers use use to came out uh, in, in almost dark conditions uh, in the evening. So uh, this is a place where the photon XT will be very useful. And um, the, the shooting range is not all that uh, drama because uh, uh, the, the, the average shooting uh, distance is, is between 50 and 150 meters. So it won't be a difficult shot. But it will be in dark conditions. Um, I have found two uh, standing area where the fallow deers are used to, to, to stay and to wait uh, at, the last, uh, um, at the last light of, of the day uh, before coming out in the, in the fields. Uh, this place, uh, as you can see, uh, is, uh, is characterized by a, a, a bush which is uh, very clean now in this season, there, there are no leaks. So, and then there are two, um, two fields. One is a millet field where they used to go to, uh, to feed and then there is a, a, a dirty uh, field over there. But uh, that is a place for roe deer and, and, and some wild boar. Then I will stay here and there is a, an olive grove which is surrounded by the uh, heavy, as you can see, they have made some special uh, net uh, to avoid the animals to come and feed in the vineyard and in the holy grove. So I will stay here and then I will wait them coming out. So a very interesting place, let's see and let's go hunting. Fallow deer, my huge fallow deer, it's fantastic. Wow, look at here, it's a great animal. Wow, what an experience ah, with my, my own rifle, my own rifle. That's fantastic, that's fantastic, guys. It's fantastic, I'm very satisfied. Let's continue the test, but I don't know if I will be able to do better than this. Wow, it was a, a great shot at 130 meters and uh, it dropped on its tracks, guys. It was almost dark, so I couldn't do anything for, for the footage with the camera, but it's really a fantastic experience. Now it's time of wild, for wild boar. Uh, I have found a very special place. Uh, I have uh, tracked uh, during uh, the last two days and uh, there is a lot of signs of their presence here. Uh, it's a very simple place. As you can see there is a thick bush where they live and uh, there is uh, two parts of, uh, of, uh, of a field. Uh, there is a lot of water here. There is two, these two fields where they used to, to roam and then there is a, a small uh, olive grove there and uh, I have uh, discovered and I have seen that they normally used to come out from uh, the wood uh, behind this olive grove because they needed to be protected during the first uh, the first meters of their coming out so uh, they, they will stay there for for some time then uh, they will come down to to this field uh, in order to feed okay for what it concerns uh, the place of shooting, uh, as you can see, there are this. This is a, a right place where to stay uh, inside. I will stay inside uh, uh, these uh, roads, okay, and uh, and then uh, I will, uh, due to the the, the fact of uh, there is a lot of of, uh, of roads uh, here, I, uh, I will be invisible uh, for them. The only uh, the only question, the only difficulty will be that uh, they will come out uh, uh, at the last uh, light 
of the day, even uh, in, in the first uh, uh, in, in the first uh, dawn. Okay, but uh, the question is that the shooting uh, range here is between 40 and 80, 90 meters. So uh, the the, sh the 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 shot will be very close. So and also uh, there is some moon uh, to, uh, tonight and tomorrow. So uh, I will uh, try to take advantage of the moon and uh, of the clean uh, field. Uh, in order to have a clean shot. Okay, let's go hunting now. Here it is, my big white boar. I was sure I got it. I. I shot it, it was dark, it was dark. I have seen it coming down from the olive grove. There were, it, there were five animals, very big. This was the first one at the head of the group. And I waited when he stopped at 80 meters from me. And then I aimed at the head and I let off the, the shot, the, the animal collapsed and I, I never seen it again because it was, there was a, a sloop of the, of the terrain but I was sure I've got it in the head so it's a very nice animal, very nice I'm very satisfied and I'm very happy for this test of this scout 306 Let's continue uh, the test of the Sabati Mercury chamber in 223 uh, in a place uh, where uh, I really love to hunt for roe deer. Um, I have uh, uh, here in the back a, a vineyard uh, in, in, uh, inside which I can, I can stay and shoot in these two uh, uh, wide and, uh, and, uh, and very long uh, grass fields. Uh, as you can see there, there is a tick bush where the roe deer used to leave and uh, in early in the morning and late in the afternoon they used to come out from that thick bush and they used to depending on on the wind direction they used to come down or they used to go uh, in, in that uh, uh, field over there there is uh, an olive grove and uh, here there is a, a, a very nice place where they you they really love to go there is a lot of water there, uh, so uh, this is a place where uh, it's, it's very clean, as you can see. So for a two through three, uh, is uh, it's, it's perfect. It's a perfect place where to uh, in which I can uh, I can test a two through three, and um, there is uh, this is a place where I can find also uh, some uh, wild boar, some uh, some. Uh, uh, um, fallow deer, so a, a very heavy bullet for the caliber could be uh, the, the the winning the winning card. Um, I I will I will hunt here uh, both in the evening and in the morning. Uh, the average shooting range is between 70 and 250 yards. So is is this is I I. I I think that it is, uh, is the maximum range of this caliber, at least for fallow deer of, or, or wild boar. Okay, let's go hunting and see uh, if uh, the fortune can be of great help. is my doe or roe deer. It wasn't a, a difficult shot, it was around 210 meters and uh, the condition of the shot were almost perfect. I have got it at the, at the heart, I have found a lot of blood. But this is uh, the typical situation of hunting with a 223 and with a scout. Uh, because uh, 
when you 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 are still hunting or stalking uh, is a very light uh, very light uh, uh, rifle and very effective especially on roe deer but I have uh, taken also wild boar and uh, fallow deer with this caliber so um, the, the question is that uh, this caliber do not have uh, uh, a significant muzzle break or uh, a significant muzzle jumping so you can see the reaction of the animal at the shot and this is very important this is this is uh, uh, mandatory and in this kind of hunting uh, so I'm very satisfied of this of this shot okay, let's proceed the test dear true hunters friends now it's time for roe deer hunting uh, I have found a very special place uh, it's uh, a tongue of, uh, of field, a very long field, about 600 yards, uh, that uh, separates uh, two woods. Here the wind uh, used to change, uh, to change a lot during the day, so uh, I, I have uh, chosen this place because if, even if the, the wind is change, changes, I have always uh, one side of the wood uh, from where uh, the roe deer can come out. Uh, now is uh, the season for doe and uh, for uh, youngsters, so uh, I have a great expectation in this place because uh, in the previous days I was hunting over there for wild boar and have seen a lot of them. Uh, the shooting range uh, here is between 50 and 220 yards more or less. So um, this is the, the real place for the 223 and, uh, and here there are not only, uh, only roe deer but also fallow deer and some wild boar. So uh, the, the heavy bullet and the, the twist rate of our scout in 223 uh, can be uh, the, the, the winning card uh, for this place. Okay, let's go hunting. The animal came out from one side of the of the wood and uh, tried to reach the other side. Uh, she didn't stop it, so I decided uh, to take my time and have the shot over the animal. She came out uh, very early, and this is, was surprising for me. And then I waited uh, a little bit more, uh, trying to find another one, but. Uh, uh, it came dark, but uh, I didn't have another opportunity. The, the, the shot was very close, uh, at least 80, 80 meters, so it, wasn't, it was not uh, very difficult. Due to all uh, its uh, innovative features, enhancement and recent chambering extension to the scout rifle's uh, conventional rules, my suspicion is that uh, these two Sabati Mercury Scouts are going to sell well, primarily to all those hunters who love to own an all-purpose, sturdy rifle that shoots well, is hassle-free and it's also particularly affordable. That's why I think it will sell well. Most of the hunters belong to this category. My hunting field test was particularly tough on these carbines because I needed to verify all the mentioned innovative features and enhancement so much uh, uh, trumpeted by the manufacturer. Sabati Mercury has done a whole lot of nice job on uh, this line of scout rifles which uh, purposes uh, the most uh, modern, which proposes uh, the most modern and useful improvements uh, to the concept. I was also very impressed by the good quality of the lenses and the technical features of the Cytron scope, especially 
uh, the double focus system and the very accurate reticle illumination system that allowed me to shoot in almost dark conditions, even at medium distance. A note of honor and pride also to the two ammunitions used during uh, my hunting field test that did a, a whole nice uh, work on such tough games, especially a wild boar that at night could become a very unattractive work while wounded. The power point is a bullet that releases a lot of its energy on the game, but with a good level of penetration, an issue that I personally prefer when I hunt a wild boar, fallow and red deer with a small caliber, especially in very low light condition, when you really need to stop them on their tracks. The Cellier and below 180 grains nozzle partition ammo was not a great surprise for me, being a fan of uh, this brand that assembles in its ammunition uh, with uh, great care for the variable, uh, for the various components, it says uh, brass cases, powders, and primers. The NSR ammo is accurate and reliable, and above all, is uh, very economic uh, due to its uh, light tag price. Well guys, my hunting field test report has now come to the end. I really hope that my extensive field test has offered you some useful information for possible future hunting experience. I wish you my really best and see you again for the next field test on truehunters.tv. This program was offered by 